Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching in the world. My name is Sean Driver. This is the Red Horde, and it's in another hors d'oeuvre where we talk about off-pitch things and how they affect the club on the pitch. This time we're talking about the cop. Recent announcement, 2,289 seats in a temporary stand being developed uh, in place of the cop temporarily. And so we're going to talk about what that means and uh, why they're doing it. So let's just get right into it. Give credit where credit is due, and that goes to Liam Roberts, who's already done a video on this matter. He jumped right all over it as part of his 21 days of videos, uh, 21 videos in 21 days. If you haven't been there, jump over, hit the subscribe button. You know, while you're at it, go to every Wrexham creator, hit the subscribe button, and do so here. Um, just to help out. It's free. You hit the button. Everybody benefits. Uh, go ahead and do that. Liam's already talked about most of the pros and cons. I'm just going to look at three specific reasons, and I, and I do that because I jump into the regulations, and I've also gone through the, the applications on the Wrexham County Borough site just to get some additional insight uh, as to what's happening to the COP and why they would end up doing this. I'm going to focus on a statement that was made by uh, Wrexham AFC, and they say the cost of the temporary stand will be greater than generated from ticket sales, but the board felt the priority was to enable more fans to see the team live and I get it altruistic reasons and they're certainly there you want to have more excitement you want to have excitement on both ends of the stand as Liam ended up identifying the club does better when it's going towards the tech end with all of the fans that are there rather than the empty end over where the cop is so it makes sense maybe it affects the on pitch directly it's certainly going to alleviate ticket sales probably going to give the, the staffers <laughs> who are dealing with the ticket sales a little bit of a reprieve as there's now uh, almost 2300 people who are going to get uh, tickets and that's less stress on them so all of those altruistic reasons are certainly there as far as pros go but I'm gonna suggest that there's a couple more one indeterminate time we don't know when this cop is going to get approved there are 17 conditions that are present uh, that have to be satisfied before spade can go into ground some of them have been dealt with some of them removed there's an application again for the removal of condition 3 um, but it's got a little bit of a snag so let's jump into that one um, there as you recall there was an application that was brought before the Wrexham City Council boroughs or Wrexham County borough essentially said wrong type of application let's do this again and hey give us a call and we'll figure out how to do this so Savills does that they send out uh, another letter November 1st and start the process up again and they they only ask for condition 3 to be removed not condition 4 even though they're interrelated condition 3 is capacity Com condition 4 is usage uh, as to hospitality suite on, in non-sporting days um, I think you could do both of them together but maybe it's just easy to focus on one deal with the other one later that's their, their strategy they're entitled to it but there's good news Jake McMillan from Welsh Water uh, writes to the county borough at their request and says thanks for the below email and that email about can you comment on whether com condition 3 can be struck and he says I can confirm that there is capacity within the public sewage to, to allow for the removal of conditions three and four. Excellent news. We're in a good place. We think that where this is going to go, that phosphorus issue, that necessity for whether it be people talking about walking around with bottles uh, <laughs> to uh, relieve themselves. Um, I, there's been reference to adult diapers, <laughs> whatever it is. Don't have to worry about that as far as Welsh water is concerned. But it's not entirely rosy because... So the letter from Natural Resources Wales says, we have concerns. Ugh. With the application as submitted, we do not recommend your authority remove condition three and advise further consideration of foul drainage as outlined below. They go down, down at the bottom of the letter and they actually say, you know, even though we've written you this letter, ultimately the suitability of foul drainage arrangements for the proposed development is a matter for your authority. So they're essentially saying to Wrexham County Borough Council, hey, you get the ultimate decision. But, you know, for the club, for the county, for their staff, for the, the councillors, they're not going to want to approve something if there's going to be uh, foul drainage or, as this letter goes on further to say, foul discharge, which sounds so much worse. <laughs> Nobody wants to deal with foul discharge. Uh, 
including all those individuals I identified. But they talk about, they provide some links to natural resource whales, websites, uh, planning advice to deal with phosphorus and all that sort of stuff. So they're going to have to deal with that. Why is that important to the COP? Well, because there's 17 conditions uh, of, of, that have to be considered. Some of them easy. You have to commence prior to January of 2028. I sure hope to hell that they're able to satisfy that one. Um, but there's some others. I'm going to go through that in a future video, but I just wanted to identify there's an unknown timeline here. The other part of the unknown timeline is conditions questions, financing questions. So it makes sense to put the temporary stand up, but there is one more reason beyond the altruistic stuff and what we have to do to determine that is jump into the EFL regulations. Why? Well, Go to section six, that's to deal with league salary, salary cost management protocol, SCMP. What's that SCMP? Well, everybody calls it financial fair play. And it says at 1.2, the SCMP requirement is a measure by where the club's player expenditure cannot exceed two things. The, the sum of two things, 50% of football turnover, and 100% of the club's football fortune. So the club football fortune, that's stuff that can't be predicted in any given year. That is your, your cup competition money. That is money you receive from transfers if somebody ends up leaving in the club benefits. That is your retained earnings on a future, on a future year. That's stuff that you walk into the year at the start with and you're able to say, hey, we can spend 100% 100 of, 100 of this if we so choose. The club's relevant turnover, that's a predictive model of what the revenues are going to be in any given year. Those revenues at, at Appendix A, they define all of that information for us, and that includes sponsorship, your league distributions, your net income from club lotteries, from catering, from programs, from hospitality, commercial, and gate receipts gate receipts whether cup competition league competition it includes your gate receipts and why is that important because by putting up 2286 people whether that be for one game two games 24 games or potentially if we go into next year i know nobody wants that it allows for further revenue there it's an insightful little move as i see it because although nobody's talking about it what it does allow is for that little bump up on what you do with your player salaries should you need it for the January window and beyond. Um, you know, 20 million turnover, we've done the video there, my most viewed video, if you haven't seen it, it's getting close to 6,000, I'll put a link up here or in the description, go and watch that one uh, for the background on the football turnover and that we, we should have 20 million quid that's there. But if a little bit more is necessary, a little bit more is desired, what this does is it moves the needle and uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a brilliant stroke of genius to, to trigger that to end up potentially using it to bring in other players should you so choose so um, more opportunity to do bigger things i'm all for that in addition to it's just the right thing to do for the fans it's more tickets more availability it's more excitement and energy within the oldest international football grounds in the world and the world just needs more of that in the words of christine sinclair i love Wrexham. Um, and I'm probably going to play that in my head all over. Look, I'm going to wrap this one up. It's getting late here. I got to be up tomorrow. I got to work early in the morning. And then I'm there for our lunchtime for the nighttime game in Wales against Burton Albion, where we anticipate it's going to be a run out of our young guys again. Uh, but join us for the watch party. We'll be there for Saturday for the FGR, for Sunday for the women's match against Britain Ferry in the uh, FAW Women's Cup, uh, the quarterfinal round for them. So we've got a lot of watch party stuff. I'm working on the Academy video. I'm also going to go through that 17 condition video to say this is where we're at with everything and uh, we've got other videos coming up it's just uh, it's a busy time with Christmas it's a busy time because of uh, well if you haven't heard the story what's going on upstairs and so it's been a thing wrapping this up thanks for joining hit the subscribe button we'll be here tomorrow for the Burton Albion thing uh, I'm signing off it's one o'clock in the morning and uh, I'm just glad I'm getting this one out there in time uh, take care